May you find happiness and peace. And may your home stand the test of time. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary. Today I'll be reacting to Charlie Knock Arrogant Libra Students Down a Few Pegs. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi Charlie. Um, I want to say, by starting off, I was told by your wonderful assistant over here that I should tell you that I disagree with almost everything. Obviously we have not had a two-hour conversation. So like, who knows, <laughs> who knows, maybe we had a few beers. We agree on something, but I'll have, wa now, I'll have water. I've, you can have whatever all you I've, want. All so. I've heard is stuff that I'm just like, what? Um, first, I want to say that I guess as the first two hours of your speech was you complaining about kind of these leftists and kind of this, but I've never heard any policy positions. When I go to something like a, a Senator Sanders convention or someone on the left, they're going to talk about health care, inequality, inflation, uh, growth. But you guys all seem to want to talk about is how the left does this or the left does that, but no policies on how to fix anything. So I guess that kind of goes with my first question is, what is the GOP's actual position when it comes to fixing inflation? Well, for, let me, a couple of things. First of all, okay. I'm not a senator, nor am I aspiring to be one. Number two, <laughs> yes, I was mildly distracted by the windows being broken and the terrorists outside. I fully acknowledge that, okay? So I was a little policy shallow tonight and a little bit terrorist deep, okay? I'll fully, I, I, will, I will admit that. Um, third, I'll say this. I don't speak for the GOP, right? I have my own ideas and... I actually think the GOP does a terrible job. But let me give you some ideas that I think you might agree with, okay? I think that vital products should be made in America, not in China. And we should use tariffs and sanctions to get it done. <laughs> Vitamin C, penicillin, critical infrastructure should be manufactured here. I think American college graduates should be given preference to go work for American companies above foreign workers. And that means reforming the H-1B system and actually giving you, the American college educated kids, a preference because we have a moral obligation to our own citizens over the citizens of another country. I think we should fully close the United States southern border. I think we should not allow illegal... I, I just want to interrupt you. Sorry. You were saying you're for a government program that puts American college students... So like, no, no, reforming the, the immigration system, right? so that big companies like Facebook don't do quasi-indentured servitude to bring foreign workers in and be able to compete but government against... But gov that would be a government program that would do that. Well, yeah, the government program actually already exists. Okay, so you're yeah. actually a conservative who's for increasing the government size, not for decreasing... Well, no, I want a small but strong government, so I want things that are smart. For example, I'd love to have more Border Patrol agents and less IRS agents, so where it makes sense to increase the volume of government agents as long as it is pursuing a couple things that are core to my philosophy. A strong country that has borders, sovereignty, culture, and maintains a moral commitment to its citizens that you should be able to work hard, play by the rules, be able to have a family, own a home, and see rising income and wages. Those are very basic things in a social contract. Why is the increasing IRS agents, which are taxes that belong to us, they help pay for things like roads, GPS, infrastructure, Basic right. things they that you and yourself needed GPS, to get here. But yeah, why so. would that be against? Why would that be so bad? Having everyone pay their fair share of taxes, so we can have a government that functions correctly. Well, Obviously, government doesn't work for everything, but we all benefit from government services every day. In the uh, basic I'm sorry, service. no one in this room is going to benefit from 87,000 new IRS agents. And so, those 87,000 new IRS agents are going to be deployed against small business owners. But I could keep on going with policy examples. I can keep on building it out. But let me just say this: I love markets but I'm willing to critique markets when I think they're not serving people and they're not serving the nation. I think our overindulgence in free trade fanaticism has been a major mistake over the last 20 or 30 years. I don't worship corporations, but I do think that entrepreneurs and private property rights and people taking risks are a general good for society. And not only does history show this, but common sense logic and you know, material reality shows all this. I can give you more and more examples if you want of policy stuff. That's less actually interesting. The reason I don't go through policy stuff is, again, whoa, is that I'm not running for office, right? I don't represent the Republican Party. But if I can build out a worldview that you can agree with, then the policy answers will come naturally, right? So if you understand morals and values, then you could answer the next 1,000 policy questions. I guess for me as a student, questions. I care a lot more about policy than what people say. Like, like what government does is a lot more important to me, and that's why I was confused why your speech was not about policy. Because, again, I'm but not anyway, running for office. I want to ask one more question so, before I go. Um, I guess for us, there used to be a thing called the middle class, or the idea of a growing and strong middle class. Yep. And okay. I feel like for the past 10 years, especially on the right, maybe on the left too, for the more neoliberal left, but the right, that idea is kind of shrunken. I don't think there's a lot of talk in middle class. Do you view income inequality as a problem? I totally and disagree. Income inequality, I want to so, say income inequality being the difference between the Let me the ask you, though. I, I have a question. Why is it that the wealthiest counties in America all vote on the left? Because that's where all the... How money works and how capitalism works is how 
all where all the wealth is where all the people want to be. But like, if, so Silicon Valley is all the jobs. Wh and all that why stuff. do they vote liberal then if the left? Well, what in what ways they vote liberal? Not on taxes, not on for, things that I am for. They vote for socially, Joe Biden. They vote for Nancy they're left, Pelosi. But they're, they're socially so, left, but they're not economic left. Believe me, I've if you go to the Bay Area, they are very economically right. Diane Feinstein is not left in my opinion. So it's it may be left socially, but I don't think they're left in my point of view. Yeah, but so, so then let me ask you then, why is it that the muscular class in America has shifted right over the last seven years? Not according to the midterms. I mean, you guys, you guys tanked in the midterms okay, most recently. You keep on so saying like, you guys. I don't represent sorry, the Republican my, my Party. Apologies. But the, I just, I, the, I just want to critique one of your misguided premises, which is that somehow the right is not representing middle class voters. It's the opposite. Actually, states that were tradi are traditionally blue collar, muscular class, middle class states are now solid red states. Look at Ohio. Ohio is a state that used to be far left, and now it's more in the right direction. So what is the right actually doing about it, to answer your question? A couple things. We're rejecting neoliberalism. Like, how about this? We shouldn't send $200 billion to Ukraine, and we should instead represent our own people and close our own border. That's number one. Number two, number two is that we should be unafraid to use tariffs and sanctions to say that critical infrastructure and things that matter should be made here in America. Whether The, the delusion on the left, and I just want to challenge you on mm -hmm. this, is that the left has a bunch of people that talk a good game, AOC and Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, but when it Love really this. matters, they're nothing more than neoliberal shills that are willing to invade other countries, invite them into our country, and then lie to their voters under the veneer of social liberalism. The populist movement in America that represents real people, muscular class teachers, police officers, and firefighters, it lives on the American right because we listen to our constituents and we're willing to fight for ideas like terror Tariffs, sanctions, closed border, and no more money to Ukraine. The left is shilling for all those things. Okay. Thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate it. Got to the next, getting to the next one. Thank you. Can I just ask, is, is, is the difference between the mean and the median? Income inequality, uh, there, is that a problem There's 50 you people guys? in line. Income Thank you. Is that a uh, income inequality is a big issue, which is exactly why I support the things that I said. Next question. I, I love this, you know, um, firstly, because Charlie is trying to let you know that he's not supporting any political, you know, what's it called, ambition. He's not a politician. That is why he's, he's trying to limit what he says about politics. But that does not mean when something is wrong, you should just, you know, shy away from it simply because he's, he's not, you know, um, coming for Congress or any political party. So I, I feel like he's, he's a sincere man. That is it. That is why I love this guy so much. He's, he's a sincere man, you know. When he sees a problem, he points at that problem. And he don't care where the problem is coming from. If it's coming from the left, if it's coming from the right, he points the problem. He said, this is a problem. We need to fix it. We need to control our borders. We need to produce things we need in the, in the country, in our country, you know, especially um, essential things, things that, basic things that, you know, we can produce, like Americans can produce. You don't need to send them to China, send them to India to produce it. Then you buy them from, the, from you know, buy it from them. You know, if we can produce it, then let's produce it. If we are investing money, let's invest money in, you know, protecting ourselves, you know, securing our border, you know, invest money in, you know, providing for our graduates, you know, instead of giving this money to, like, um, foreigners, you know, like providing money for Ukraine and so many other countries, let's use that to, you know, better our life, you know. It's like you need to be doing good for yourself before you can lend a, a helping hand to someone. So let's, let's put ourselves in that stage, you know, let's close our southern border, let's do everything that will make America great then before we start, you know, helping. And I think he's right. You know, I, I, I can't be hungry in my house and be lending out food. So I need to be, like, okay before I can, you know, let other people enjoy the benefits of being in my place. And I think that is what Charlie is getting at. He, he feels like, um, don't try to act like you have it all, you know, in the faces of, you know, others. Whereas your home is in danger or your home is on, is on fire. You know, try and quench your fire in your home, try and provide for your home, try and make sure everyone in your home is living, you know, healthy, living fine. And that is it. Graduates are leaving the school every day. Let them be enough work for them so that they won't leave and, you know, start looking for something to do or find a, or a way of living the country simply because, you know, what they study, they can't work in your country. And I think that is what is affecting us in Africa because, you know, we are, we are being taught, you know, theory, theory, theory without, you know, practical. We, we end up finishing school and... You know, what we study in school, we, we can't, you know, defend it. We can't, we can't work because there is no job for us. So we have to travel out, you know, looking for greener pasture. And I think that is what Charlie is trying to avoid. Charlie is trying to say, let's fix what is happening at home before we start helping others. And it's good, you know, it, it, it may sound selfish, but 
that is the sincere truth. Anyway, there's a beautiful one coming from Charlie. I enjoyed this so, so much. And I definitely want to see more videos like this. If you have any recommendation, let me know in the comment section. If it's your first time visiting the channel, click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. And remember this.